So first phase of the game was starting your economy, starting your economy, getting to age two. So once you're in age two, this is where things get a little bit hairier because now things are getting aggressive. So we saw the first attack in the first video, but now we're going to look at the defense and the follow up. So just a small recap. The Knights came into the base. Louis decided he is going to make spearmen and he is he has two more coming out. Because he knows that knights are going to fight him and they're constantly going to harass. So he's going to put in every exposed place, he's going to put some army units. He's going to put army units maybe over here, one over here. And instead of putting army units over here, he's just going to wall off this side. Now, this is a pretty big wall. It's quite unfortunate for him. But again, the knights can now run around and just harass from this side. So Louis is most likely going to have a scout consistently keep an eye on the knights or he's just going to wall off the side too. But this is again a very big wall. You don't want to use that many resources on a wall. You would rather make production so you can make more units. So now we're going to talk about the follow up. What happens after that initial stage? So now Louis has a choice. What do I do? Do I get upgrades? Do I make a lot more units? Um, am I going to go for castle age? And we're going to see what these guys are going to go for. But Papi Po is French. And like I said, French is aggressive. So we're going to have to see. Oh, oh we can play again. We're going to have to see how he responds. So Papi Po keeps going. He goes around with the knights. He's like, I'm just going to keep harassing. Just like I said, he knows there's an open spot on this side. And he's going straight for the wood line because the wood line doesn't have any military. Now, if he does this, you can see he's running this way. But Papi Po knows where he's vulnerable. So he also has a scout. So he sees the knights aren't here. So he moves his scout and all his army to the bottom. Now he can just make sure that his new army is going to the top as well. And on the other side, we see Papi Paul going for the second TC because he knows that Louis is not going for a fast castle. That's what not what it looked like initially. When you have three villages on gold, you usually, that's not you going for castle. That is you going for upgrades and getting a few extra things for your base, you know? But if you have six on gold, that is a castle. But Papi Paul didn't see that. Papi Paul did not see that Louis is going for six on gold. Now, this can go really bad for Papi Paul, but this can also go really good for Papi Paul because Papi Paul can continue harassing while Louis is spending his resources trying to get to the next age, or he's just trying to get a lot of upgrades very quickly. So, we see now the army has reacted, and Papi Paul's like, oh, okay, I can't harass here. Well, now, and he goes back in. Because again, knights run fast, so they can just wait. And then the next knights will go here. So the pro players do this well. We can't do this, most of us. <laughs> they split up their army. So you have to control, press control, one. Control two, if you want to keybind. See, now I just keybound these. So I'm doing that. But now if I press, if I click on this villager, but I press one, I selected these. And on the bottom side, I keybind them to number three. So now I can switch between these two groups consistently. And you can keep an eye on them. And this happens in game as well. So now if you're the player here, you want to attack on two sides because most people cannot deal with this amount of actions at the same time. Now, don't do this if you're in gold. You're not going to be able to do this. This is you, you need to practice a little bit more. It, it takes a while to get used to this. I can't even do this effectively, and I'm basically diamond sometimes. <laughs> so you can see the knights are consistently trying to attack. Let's look at the upgrades. None of them getting upgrades right now. Papi Paul has 300 gold. That's a lot of gold to not use. You can see he uses his palings to make sure the knights can't go in. And at the bottom side, where are those knights? Oh, I just pressed number three. He sent those knights back because they took too much damage. And he doesn't want to lose those knights. They're very expensive. So he just sends them back. So you can see here, a knight is 140 food and 100 gold. So if you kill a knight, that's pretty good for you. So Louis, he's just chilling, getting his, um, his spearmen to make sure that he is protected. Now, Papi Paul reacts with this by getting archers. Archers are good against spearmen. 
Spearmen die very quickly when you can target fire archers, but now you also have to remember, you have to be able to keybind them, because you can't just click on one unit. All your units will go for that thing at the same time. And you don't want your horses to run in at the same time, all like at that spearman, because they're also going to surround him, they're going to take too much damage, you're going to attack move. <laughs> now let's quickly... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's see. See? My key binding now allows me to spectate as well. He put these groups together, because you can see this is from group 1, 2, and this is from group 3. Let me just make this group 2 and not group 1, 2. Yeah, I just need to key bind something else to number 1. Let me key bind this thing to number 1. Okay. So now you see group 2 and group 3. We can keep an eye on these consistently. And he might even split them up again, but now we see Louis is going for his fast castle. And again, this is because you can see he has a lot more villages on gold. And he didn't waste these resources. He is now using this. But Papipo is going to see this and he's going to be like, oh, crap, what do I do? He's going to now see, now I either have to go castle age or I, and he's doing exactly that. He's going for castle age as well. That is a lot of resources to just keep floating at that level. So you know he's going Castle Age, but you can see he's consistently making units, even here. They don't ever stop making units, and they don't stop making villages either. So both of them will be going Castle, and the moment that Papipo sees Louis going Castle, he will do the same. But you have two choices. If you see your opponent as Castle, you need to realize he just spent 1,800 resources making a building. When none of the upgrades are coming through yet. So that's when you need to attack. You need to know what your opponent is doing so you can respond. Because now Puppy Paul spent his extra resources on a on an extra TC. This means he's making a lot more villages very quickly. And he's also going for a stone. The reason he does this is because French has this um I think bonus, I guess, that they can build a keep. And when they build a keep, they have faster production, so they can make more and more units. Now you can see that Louis is walling off. He's like, I don't want to get raided by the knights the whole time, so I'm just going to put a cheap little wall here to protect myself. But again, this is not done early game. I know for most people, 11 minutes is early game, but this is phase two of the game. This is for them. They're going to castle. They're in H3. So all of these decisions that they're making, let's see. They're getting upgrades to Veteran for the Spearman, because he knows the Spearman is the most important part of his composition right now. He needs these guys to survive. So, on the other side, we see Puppy Paw has ranged oh, the melee damage, sorry, melee damage, because he wants to make sure the Knights hit really hard. So, all of these benefit different units. So, the first one, as we can see, Iron Undermesh, increased the ranged armor. So... If your opponent has a lot of archers, you might go for ranged armor. And here the knights just snuck in. Ah! And that's it. He made the army move out by using some of his units. And now that knight group I talk we talked about earlier, they just snuck right in through this little open wall. So the wall wasn't properly built. And that can cost Louis a lot. Because now we can see the difference between these two. 65 supply versus 72, but see the villagers. That's 20 villagers more. That's going to be a lot more income. Look at that. So that's 500 or 600 food per minute compared to 1,000 food per minute. 360 versus 280, pretty similar. And then the gold, also pretty similar. But that food income, that's going to make the difference between making a lot of knights and being able to defend against those. So now there's a little wall here. Everything's looking good. They fix their wall here. They're like, ah, oh. Louise says, oh, I need to actually not let the knights run into my base. And because Louis is not attacking, he's getting further and further behind. Because now this second TC for Louis, because this is his third age landmark, it's making villages, but it's not making villages at the same pace as, in, oh, as French, because French got it earlier. So... At the same pace, but not at, how can we say this, not, not at the same value. Now, French also has a little bit faster build time. You can see villages at English, 20 seconds. On this side, you can see they are 16 seconds. So they do have a little bit faster, but usually if you have 2 TC against 2 TC, you should be fine. But the fact that he had 2 TC this early puts him so much further ahead, especially at our rank. And I also didn't know that. I just found that out. But I was like, maybe that is the case. And now archers don't do any damage to knights. They tickle knights. They, you can see, like, if we, we 
they, this one should probably take a few shots. Let's see if he's gonna... Ah, he's not gonna take a few shots. They do so little damage against him. And that's exactly why he's getting this upgrade. So you can see the ranged damage is going to get an upgrade. So those archers are gonna do a little bit more damage. But you can't kill knights with archers. You need crossbows or you need to use your spears. But now we're gonna see Louis... Oof. Louis, you need to be able to defend this. But those villagers are very vulnerable. He just lost a very expensive unit. But you can see those archers, there's a lot of them, and they're barely scraping that real knight. So, Louis is pushing a little bit forward. He's making a tower here because English has the ability to give you more attack speed when you have a tower closer to the enemy. So if you have, it also counts for TC. So when the enemy goes into your base or around your base, your, all your units in this range will have more attack speed. So it's the same with the forward tower. You also need to make your towers forward, then they also get attack speed when they come into range. So now Louis knows he needs to find damage because he knows that French has faster production and he knows that, um, yeah, he's not going to be able to keep up with the castle age French. Now English is really good in the late game because they have amazing bonuses, but at this point you are pretty evenly matched against French, and you need to make plays to get damage done. So, H4, English is great. And why don't you just go H4 then, people would ask. Because if you go H4 now, Puppy Paul will just make units and kill you. Because it's very expensive to go for H4. You can see here, he doesn't have the income to just go for the next age. You have to make sure that you're not just going for the next age because you're excited for it you know or your units are better you have to make sure that your opponent is not making 500 units and ready to run into your base now this is pretty bad from puppy paul he just ran a knight into the spears again but he took two out two villages which is pretty good especially when he already has almost a 30 lead so the knight's here he says i'm actually looking for some, da some damage and i want you guys to notice though those knights from earlier they're still alive, or oh, three of them are still alive. You can see there's group three and two of group two. So he didn't lose his units. He loses a little knight here and there, but it's not that significant. And now the army is even. And Poppy Paul, 27 villager lead. This is going to be very scary, especially with Louis now idling his villagers every now and again as well. So the other thing that he did here is he made a wall around the wood. Now, this is because when you are... Get us busy. How can we say this? When you are chopping your wood, you might chop right through the wood and then the knights can just run in and pour into your base. So they make a uh, wall around it, especially on a map like Lipany. So now the knights are running around, they're regening and they're going to look for a fight. And this should be the end of the game because Puppy Paw just has such a scary army. You can also see he's getting another upgrade as well. He wants his archers to do more work because even though the army is pretty even, Keep in mind that those are knights. Those are those are spearmen. Those are very, very different units. A knight can do a lot more damage than a spearman if you micro them correctly. So they're more expensive, they're more chonky, and they're just gonna end this game. I was hoping we would go into H4 so that I can talk you guys through the last stage of the game, but I'll do that at another time when I have another game. So now you can see he has a siege engine as well, and this is just the final game push. And how did I know that? How did I know that this was it? The fact that Louis' army can in no world defend against this tells me that Puppy Paw is just going to push and end it right here. Even though it looked like Louis was being aggressive by making a tower here, the fact that Puppy Paw is, has these wonderful, wonderful siege engines, the Manganels, it's really good against English, especially against this composition. You have so many archers, you have so many crossbows and spearmen, and they're very going to take a lot of damage from that. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh. They almost take a third of the HP. So that's going to help him win a fight very soon. Now, two Manganel shots can end this game. And again, now we see that 30 villager lead just showing us how the income difference can look. Now, Louis is not sure what to do because, again, knights, oh, look how many things he loses just from those mangonels. And he responds to the mangonels by making a spring alt. Now, the spring alt is going to be good for taking them out, but he's not going to get that spring alt close enough to take out both of them. The knights are going to go right through. They don't even care about the army for now. They were going to go straight for the economy. But he decides to come back. He's like, oh, I can take this. And he just he's just going to run right through this army because knights are very powerful. 
They are very strong and we can see the spring all trying to get the mangonel. He's like going closer. He gets the mangonel. But this mangonel is going to get a shot off, which is definitely going to help this fight as well. The mangonel gets taken down, but now the spring ult comes from Papi Paw as well. And the thing is, now even though Louis is holding this, because now, keep in mind, even though his army was not as big, he has that attack speed buff I told you guys about. You see the yellow around this un these units? This means that they all have the attack speed buff. And they are just attacking at the speed of light. I think it's 30% or 20%. Not sure. I need to fact check that. And the Spring Old's doing his thing. He's going to go down here. But the fact that he has more villages means that he's going to be able to produce a lot more as well. Oh, so apparently the game did not end here. I really thought that this game would, would end. I thought that fight was going to go a lot better. Oh, but he realizes I, I'm not going to be able to keep up with this. I think especially when he saw the trebuchet, he's like, ah... I don't have the resources to make a mangan or a spring old right now. And that's like the first and ugh, I mean they go really quickly from what looks to us like late game because I know that most people at my rank are not very aggressive. So yes. What is the name of the game? What game? Age of Empires? <laughs> okay. So that's it. French keep bonus are cheaper, not fast. Uh, cheaper? Ah, oh, Captain Obvious. I am corrected. Captain Obvious has corrected me. I do not play French, I'll be honest. Okay. The units are cheaper. They're not they're not faster. Thank you. <laughs> okay, cool. There we go. Now that is it, boys and girls. Thank you for watching on YouTube, and I'll see you in the next one. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Is that the is that the right exit? <laughs>